Welcome to The Point, a podcast by Apex Benefits and dedicated to employee benefits thought leadership. You can find more episodes for free on iTunes by searching The Point or Apex Benefits. Please rate, review, and subscribe to be the first to know about what we have in store for you. To learn more about Apex Benefits, please visit our website at www.apexbg.com or find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. Let's get to the point together. Welcome back to The Point. This is Scott Long, Executive Advisor with Apex Benefits and having the pleasure to sit down this, uh, today anyway with uh, Wes Steele, President of uh, Steel Benefit Services. Welcome, Wes. It's good to be back, Scott. Yeah, it's, it's right. We were just talking about that. This is, uh, this is appearance number three or four, so we're hitting the repeat button. I like it. Hey, um, before we dive in, uh, for our listeners that, uh, that have not maybe heard you in the past, um, share a little bit about your background, what your company does, and, and your passion. Sure. So Steel is a benefits communication, engagement, and enrollment company. So we focus on uh, all three of those aspects. We work with companies typically that have between 250 and 10,000 employees, and we uh, do do our best to help the workforce be a prosperous place. And certainly there's uh, big benefits of communication for employers of all sizes. And so we try to help you deliver on that, uh, that promise to your employees and help you get your bang for the buck for the, the dollars that you decide to spend uh, offering benefits to your employees. Yeah, it's, it's an important, it's really an important topic. I mean, it, it's um, obviously from a baseline standpoint, uh, you know the benefits and the, and the money that you spend on them, right? It, the value is is when your your employees tap into them. So if they can't, uh, a if they don't know where to get to, you know, can't access, don't understand, you know, those are those are two pretty big hurdles. But um, you know, part of the reason why I I wanted to get your perspective on on what's playing out this summer and 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 what we we think you know, may play out this, this uh, fall for, for those that renew their health plan uh, in December and January is, you know, COVID has, has forced, uh, you know, the reset of certain things. It's, it's really caused uh, business leaders to um, think about uh, a lot of different business matters uh, in, in just different ways. And so, um, you know, I, like I said, I, I've been, um, I've been talking to my clients in, in sort of um, over the last three weeks, something really uh, kind of really caught me was that, you know, my clients are supporting their, their employees. Um, you know, sometimes it, it's situations that I'm hearing about supporting employees that have never been a remote, remote employee period, right? Not just at their, at their 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 current employment but have never done it in the uh, you know in the past and so the flip side of that is you know not every uh human resources professional has supported remote employees either and so you know i really wanted to get uh this mini series uh put together and organized to provide some additional perspective um, that really would be timely help, timely support, timely resource. And so, you know, with that said, uh, you know, we know that that traditional traditional means of communicating with employees uh, has typically been email. You know, there's some that that have uh, gotten intranets and so forth. But you know, when word of mouth is is off the table uh, as it is for many right now because you know employees are remote and some are starting to come back to the office you know um, we've seen the acceleration of certain things certain services um, play out because they're an absolute need right now uh, for example telemed you know we've seen the adoption rate uh, of telemedicine explode right in the last 90 days uh, whereas four or five years ago, um, you know, there was still a question on, you know, would it really be helpful and is it the right service at the right cost and um, how do you judge the, the return on investment and so forth. So, you know, as you, as you think about the work that you do and, and 
and how you're setting up uh, employers for success, Wes, you know, how do you see the, the open enrollment um, season change? Uh, how do you see uh, things play out, uh, you know, this, this open enrollment season? Well, in years past, so many employers, you know, one of the, the most effective things that they do to communicate their open enrollments is to do group on-site employee meetings in person at their benefit sites and pass out paper pieces of material for them to read and review and take home. And I think it's probably a pretty safe bet that that process is, is not going to be the same this year. So as I think about open enrollment, you know, there's really kind of two different things that an employer needs to think about. And the first is, how do you get that pre-education into their hands? Like the engagement aspect of it before the open enrollment, whatever ever starts. So uh, a day before, a week before, a month before, how is it, what means do you have available to communicate to your employees to let them know what's going on? And, um, it's one of those where there are tools available, uh, for example, webinar software, uh, the ability to send text messaging, surveys, quizzes, you know, there's some digital tools that are available out there that we can talk more about that have the potential to really make a big impact from the pre-communication angle. Uh, once we get out of the pre-communication angle and into open enrollment itself, you know, how are employees going to physically make those elections? And we recently did a, survey of about 100 employers uh, and what we found is 91 percent of employers are interested in some sort of online enrollment or self-enrollment for employers this, this year and so uh, for those of you on the line that maybe haven't taken that step to move your enrollment online this year you know now now may be the time to take a serious look at that and you still have you know as we're recording this today on the 16th of june it's best practices to, for a january one type um, implementation to make that decision before September 1st. So that's a something that uh, your guests may want to consider you know, if they haven't done that yet. Is, you know, what does that look like and what's the right solution for them? You know, the 91% uh, the thing, Scott, I think is interesting. So I, I sit on the homeowners association in my neighborhood yeah. and we recently did a survey for how many of our homeowners in our neighborhood would be okay if we planted trees in our neighborhood. And what we found is 85% of uh, the people in our neighborhood were open to planting trees, but 91% of employers are interested in self-enrollment. So a, a different way of looking at this is uh, HR people are more interested in self-enrollment right now than my neighbors are in providing oxygen. So it's, you know, pretty important <laughs> to think about. Yeah, that, that I get. That I get. Never, neighborhoods are always tricky. Uh, and been a part of the RHOA too. Hey, so what I'm hearing you say is timing, timing, and then tools, right? So uh, let's let's peel apart a little bit about what you're you're talking about with the pre-communication. Um, you know, from a timing standpoint, uh, you know, as it relates to the the January enrollments, are you starting to see employers kind of lay out that lay the groundwork? I know we're certainly having conversations about how we can uh, take uh, lessons learned, things that worked well uh, at the heart of COVID in March and April, and sort of apply those lessons forward. Um, in terms of engaging remote staff, but what's what's been your experience with employers that are that are shifting their attention? Yeah, and there will be a time where you need to create content based on the specific stories that you have going on around your renewal. So it's not critical that you have the content lined up at this specific moment in time, but you need to at least understand what your medium of communication is is going to be, whether it's going to be webinars or text or whatever it's going to be. Yeah, you need to. Get, I, I, you're right. You know, like you said, the tools. If you're going to move into the to an online enrollment, I think everybody uh, probably listening knows that that's that's not a a thirty thirty to forty five day process. So um, content will come, but I think what I'm hearing you say is is platform and and kind of getting getting the the framework laid out is absolutely critical right now. We're we're in mid June. So, um, yeah, but I think one of the things that is an interesting story that's going to develop as a result of this, too, is I think COVID has the potential to completely transform not just benefit communication, but employee engagement in general. And where I'm going with that is 
uh, once you put these types of digital tools in place, you're not only limited to open enrollment communication and how you use them. So for example, if you had a, a system set up that maybe what you put it in place for was to text and say open enrollment starts on this date or don't forget to enroll or here is what's going on with the health plan with a little bit of drip information out about it. Let's just say that you couldn't use that same system to send a text that says happy birthday or congratulations on your work anniversary or welcome to the company. You know, as we think about like the core functions of benefits, you know, the attraction and retention of talent, really what uh, what these communication tools enable you to do is do some of the things that we've maybe been giving lip service to for a long time, of just creating more of an actual intersection between benefits communication and engagement and getting guys back to things like talent attraction and employee loyalty. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the sense that I'm getting is that you know, employees are relying on these tools, they're relying on these platforms for messages because uh, let's face it, there was a there was a good amount of, um, oh, I don't know if you'd say fear, but there was a good amount of vulnerability. And, uh, you know, after your 10th, 11th, 15th, 20th day at the house working and trying to perform for your 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 company for your employer um in the the method of communication is through this this uh you know online platform and that's really how you're getting the news that's how you're getting uh messaging that's how you're you're understanding your your role within the company i think you make a really good point wes that you know i think employees are are going to become more accustomed to relying on those type of tools uh than we've seen in the past and it's it's having a really good uh impact as it relates to benefits communications but we should see a pretty uh you know a broad impact on the on the whole uh, engagement scene too and you know something else employers can do, Scott, is you know some of the the people that are listening right now, they have very blue collar populations too. They work on manufacturing lines or in maintenance or custodial or uh, whatever the situation may be. And there's a certain amount of people that this just isn't comfortable how they. This is not where they're comfortable consuming information. And so when you do go to those online type. Uh, solution, one thing that you may want to consider is how do you bring the human element back into it as well and make sure that you're at least, you know, providing that as an angle. So an, an example of something that you might do in that scenario is consider, yes, we're going to ask you to maybe self-enroll online in your benefits this year, but for those people that need assistance, is there a phone number that I can call and uh, can I have somebody either help me with enrollment or complete enrollment, answer benefit questions, those types of things as well. Yeah, so you can pick up the phone and, and make that call. And oftentimes it's positioning that message as how to make that first call, right? If you don't have a computer, if you're in, in you're on the floor, right, and you don't have a computer that's not part of your, your daily work, you know, what do I do? Where do I go to get the information I need? Who can help? But uh, you know, oftentimes it's it's you know, it's by phone. So, hey, I wanted to ask you too about um, kind of alternative communications. Um, we've 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 kind of gotten there a little bit with uh, with the conversation so far. But you know, we were talking about before we we came on uh, and started recording today. We we're talking about um, you know notifications and, and and text messaging and so forth. And so, you know, even even for in this example that we just talked about, you know, even if you're you're in a, uh, a job where you don't you know you don't interact with a computer at all, you know, it, everybody has a phone, right? So, mm -hmm. what um, you know, I guess as you as you're 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 beginning to kind of uh, see uh, fourth quarter and open enrollment season ramp up, you know, uh, what alternatives are you seeing employers turn to um you know at either as a direct result of covid or or otherwise what do you what are you seeing employers turn to so one of the things that we recently did too is survey employers about what types of communication methods that um employers wanted to see leading up to open enrollment. And one of the things that we found is certainly there's a reliance on email as a way of putting information out, and I don't foresee that changing. Uh, but 60% of employers did say that they are interested in some sort of text messaging solution. So okay. that is coming, and that I think has an opportunity to be a big part of your future communication strategy. 
But uh, my my daughter is a Marvel fan, so she likes the Spider Man. And you know, one of my one of my favorite quotes in there is, "It with great power comes great responsibility." Mm-hmm. So we surveyed uh, those same HR people, and we asked HR people the question: If we were to send you information, uh, how what would you be most likely to read? And we asked we had some digital options on there, like postcards and benefit booklets and some of those kind of things. And then the two digital options in the survey were email and text messaging. And what we found is 50% of the people said email, 50% said text messaging, and 0% said the digital stuff. And so there's a definite higher wow. behavior out of there where if you want to send that information that your employees are going to read, you know, trying to send something home to their house, but if you're not also giving it to them digitally, you're running a really high risk that it's not going to get that at all. The other piece, if we're going to kind of like dig deeper into that and dive in a little bit, 50% said they were more likely to uh, read an email than a text message. And wow. I'm just going to put it out there right now. I don't believe them. But what they're really saying is don't send me too many text messages. Like I'm already inundated with 3,000 emails. And I get hit in my box over and over. And my text messaging is my one place where it's my safe place where I can go to to read something point. really important. Yeah. And so, as an employer, when you have that tool available, it doesn't mean you can start carte blanche just pegging them on stuff here left and right. You got to be really careful and be strategic about what you send out to make sure you're not abusing that privilege that you're being granted by your employees. That's really good perspective, right? So, uh, you know, you've got. Uh, you know, we've got apps on our phones, right? Whether it's uh, gymnastics, whether it's soccer, football, lacrosse, whatever the sport is, nowadays there's a there's an app for everything, and there's constant questions about what jersey to wear, and you know, do I bring purple Gatorade today or do I bring blue Gatorade? You know, so there's you know, you end up with a with uh, you know a, a million uh, notifications on apps and then everything else that we mm-hmm. subscribe to. So I like how you you framed that. It's kind of the safe place. So don't uh, don't bl- don't bl- go blowing up my uh, my text messaging. So you've got to get real yeah. strategic from a timing yeah. standpoint and, and what you send. So I appreciate and you know that. a company that's pretty good at engaging people just in general is Twitter. And so if we could borrow a good idea from Twitter, right? Uh, Twitter knows that you're more likely to stay engaged as a user if the absolute maximum character limit is 140 characters, right? Yeah. So now you're an employer and you have these this new tool and maybe you have the ability to generate some of your own content. There's always a temptation, especially in HR, to want to make sure that we tell people everything so right. that they, so that employees can't come back and say, I didn't know that, right? But we take a cue from Twitter, we know that we lose people when we start to exceed 140 characters. And so my suggestion is incorporate that into your own practices as well and don't send text messages longer than 140 characters. Right. Yeah. Whereas you want to, you with those characters, you want to you pull them in, but you, too many and it turn into a full length paragraph or a multi page email. You're really pushing them away. So, Wes, and, I, and if you want to link them to a landing page, by all means, do it. But uh, if you're running more than 140 characters, you really need to be linking them out to something else. Yeah. Yeah. Put them, point them to the resources. Wes, thanks so much for uh, for devoting time to the, the the conversation today. Always good to have you on the point, and uh, we'll we'll have to do this again soon. I look forward to it, Scott. Thanks for having me on. You can find more episodes for free on iTunes by searching The Point or Apex Benefits. Please rate, review, and subscribe to be the first to know about what we have in store for you. To learn more about Apex Benefits, please visit our website at www.apexbg.com or find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. Let's get to the point together.